Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Two Point Hospital Strategy and Tactics. So today we are going to focus on the marketing room. Now, as far as building your marketing room here, I'm not going to necessarily go through a, a specific build video. Uh, here I have a marketing room that is big enough for four people. Do you need four people? Probably not. You can probably get away with just one, maybe two marketers. But today we're going to be just to sort of explain the different types of campaigns and more specifically how to maximize your benefit from one of those campaigns. Uh, we're going to be having a bunch of guys here just to show off the more significant effects. Now, in the very early game, one of the most important campaigns, and probably one of the reasons why I would include a marketing room in your initial build-out, is the recruitment campaigns. Now, the recruitment campaigns can um, sort of gear specific types of people for you, but at the very beginning of the game, you just want warm bodies to pick through. Because you can't necessarily recruit for, say, GPs, or treatment doctors, or treatment nurses, or diagnostic nurses, or what have you. Um, you can only go for a couple of specific types here. So unless you're like doing smogly and you need a you need the surgeons, um, then you know maybe the surgeon campaign might suit you. But otherwise, generally speaking, you want to just go for one of the vanilla campaigns. Uh, I usually go for the nurse campaign at the very very beginning of the game. Now, what does this campaign actually do for you? Well, let's launch this campaign and let our uh, marketers make their way over here. Now, as far as nurses go, um, let's you see this date. Let's see this rate right here. This rate of new applicant in. Ba 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 ba. Well, here let's um, let's delete a few of them. And now look how it got a little faster when one of our marketers went into the uh, into the to the uh, table here. Let's look in here, and notice it's getting even faster. And we're going to have another marketer in here, and it's going to get even faster. As soon as they start working. Whoop. Now the effects are not going to be quite as dramatic, depending on the skill. But now look how fast this is. This is nuts. This is absolutely nuts. And from here, you can chew through here. And if, you're, if you want to fill some staffing people here... Um, oof, I kind of botched that Portishead one. Um... If you want to feel, 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 uh, field some new staffing here, this is probably one of the best ways to go about doing it because you can roll and re-roll. It's like, oh, nope, you're polluted and you're polluted and uh, this guy's good and this one's not good and this one's good, ba ba ba, and boom, boom, boom. You just keep getting more and more people rolled. And it's huge because, I mean, all we did here was pay about 7,000 bucks. Now, the effect is not going to be anywhere near this dramatic um, with just one marketer. Um, it, like one level one marketer, it's not going to be anywhere near this effect effective. But it's still a rather dramatic increase here. So this is one of the things you can do to, you know, if you've got the money to, to expand your hospital out, and you just need more more uh, people to staff it properly, this is the best way to keep rolling and rolling for new people. Look at that! Triple treatment after all those. Heck yeah, let's go, let's do triple treatment. Um, so that's, that is probably one of the one things. And of course, if you've gotten everyone you need, you can just cancel it, turn it off, and free it up for something else. Now, the... Um, uh, as far as reputation goes, I mean, unless you've gotten waves upon waves of deaths and you need to fight against that, um, I wouldn't bother doing a marketing campaign for reputation, really. Um, it's The game is it's too easy to get, get and maintain reputation here. Now, illness marketing... Hmm... This, I, I would, in my early testing, I would originally avoid, uh, I advise you to avoid this, if at all possible. However, doing some more tinkering, there is a specific gambit that you can do to uh, have this pay off for you. 
And that is the, uh, the easy peasy, um, lightheadedness campaign. Now, depending on your particular level, whether or not you've actually uh, gotten some lightheadedness patients, uh, um, and first off, in order to campaign for a specific type of illness, you need to naturally get at least one person uh, who's had that um, in the in the first place. Otherwise, they won't. Uh, otherwise, it won't appear as an option. Um, in this particular one, we've got lightheadedness. Uh, but basically, a clinic of whatever the uh, whatever the easiest clinical uh, cure is. Now, why, why are we focusing here on lightheadedness? Well, if we look at this, illness difficulty 20%. That is easy. That is laughably easy. Uh, if we take a look at the log here, what did this person do? What did this lightheadedness permit? They che got checked in, they went to the GP's office, and they got 100% diagnosed on the first try. Easy freaking peasy. That's what you get with a really softball uh, illness. On the flip side, if we take a look at our prices, um, lightheadedness, it's a pretty decent price. And you know what? There's a little bit more to this gambit. Uh, contrary to my um, um, uh, advice on uh, pricing in general, we're actually going to crank the uh, lightheadedness cure up to 50% because we went ahead and train some of our uh, treatment people, uh, well, that's the person I just hired, um, in, um, I, I have a couple of uh, uh, treatment staff who are set up to be specifically um, only, only working in the lightheadedness clinic and specifically set to have the bedside manner. So if you know you're going to be overcharging someone and you know you're gonna get a lot of people in there, you can milk a lot of money from that by just making sure that not only the people um, set to work there are good at treatment, but also have bedside manner. Now then, let's, uh, let's kick off a lightheadedness campaign um, and launch this beast. Now, the other reason why I advocate specifically going after a clinical um, um, uh, type of thing, as opposed to, say, like pharmacy or ward or psychology, is those will bring in people. See, we already got our fresh, first fresh uh, lightheadedness person coming in, but it gets more. The, um, if you get, um, you know, if you advertise for one of those, you'll get a slew of patients running the whole gambit of those. And that includes having, um, uh, patients with difficult versions. There are easy pharmacy cures. There are really difficult pharmacy cures. There are easy psychological cures. There are really freaking difficult ones. And if you get an influx of all of those, you're going to get an influx of the harder ones, and that's going to back your system up. That's not what you want. Whereas if you go for the clinical you go for the clinical advertisement for a real softball clinic uh, uh, type deal, you know what that illness difficulty is because you're only dealing with one illness. In this case, lightheadedness. Now you can do even more to prepare for this, and that is when you advertise for a clinic. Look, you know, look at all these light bulb heads we're getting in here. Oh, please don't blow up on me. This <laughs> the janitor's freaking out. It's like, let me fix that! Anyway. Um, on two point radio. But you can prepare by that by building additional clinics of that type and upgrading them to level three. If you motorized vehicle, then I suggest you get off the road. And that's today's traffic report. I, um, I'm going to just prefix these thanks to the earthquake there. But yeah, here I've built three lightheadedness clinics in order to deal with the rush. Now the rush is going to be a little bit delayed because you know, once the advertisement goes out, you're, it, it is going to still send people. It's just going to take a while for them to filter through. Now with lightheadedness, especially if we're going to be bullseyeing all of our, all of their uh, diagnostics are going to be very quickly making their way over to their uh, curing clinics. And by filtering them through the whole system lightning quick, we get an increase in volume of patients without an increase in the wait times 
or madness. So you get a slight increase in your GP's cues, but even then that's going to be just a slight bump in the road because they're not going to having to they're not going to have to go there to do repeat visions. Uh, so let's fast forward just a little bit as we can once we uh, once all these light bulb heads make their way through our system. And this is the result. All of these uh, yeah, yeah, ignore that. We had a bad earthquake before. Um, we, um, so we are now firing on all cylinders. All of our lightheadedness people are starting to line up for cures. Although not really line up because we prepared for the demand early on. And yes, we are making the Boku Bucks here. We've got our trained doctors. We've got our max upgraded um, uh, machines here. We are pulling in a lot of scratch. Notice we are now in the six millions instead of the five millions. Um, so uh, that, my friends, is a little bit of a money-making gambit. Now, again, it depends on whether or not you're able to get um, a low mothball, uh, softball type of cure um, available so that you can advertise for it. But if you can, if you do, this is a great way to do it. Um, just to really rack up the funds and basically hit, um, not only, not only make a whole lot of money, but also pad your patient's cured number because it adds to your number of patients that would normally show up for your reputation and level. Uh, so if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback's always welcome. Um, so until next time, and why is this doctor not calling people in uh so until next time uh this has been pinstar signing out see ya